this week, I want to share with you three examples of creative thinking outside the box to solve problems. And two of these in particular may have direct applications for you as a private investigator. Hi, this is Larry Kay with ShadowAnyone.com and the creator of the Investigator's Ultimate Guide series, which is premium private investigator training from someone who's been there and done that. Uh, it's been pointed out to me that I've gone a little while without reminding people that I do have a free report over at ShadowAnyone.com, which is titled, If You Want to Be a Private Investigator, Give Up, Unless You Do These Three Things. Uh, you can get that on the homepage over at ShadowAnyone.com. And I, as I've mentioned before, I kind of did spill a little bit more and give a little more details in that than I initially intended to, but it's definitely worth the read. Okay, done with the housekeeping. Thinking outside the box, creatively solving problems in a different way, so vitally important for private investigators because, you know, we just do not have the typical resources that a lot of people might think that we have. Uh, we have more resources than the general public by nature of having our license. There are companies and databases and things that will deal with us uh, that won't deal with the general public, but by the same token, we're not law enforcement, so we don't have the, the lead system. We don't have a lot of, uh, you know, we can't just uh, flash our badge and talk to people. People, it's a whole different category. It's a whole different way of handling things. And forgive me, law enforcement that's watching, I know that uh, you don't strong arm your way typically. But let's face it, if a police officer is asking you questions, it has a whole different tone and connotation than if a private investigator is or a private citizen is for that matter, right? So we as private investigators have to figure out ways to get information and solve problems uh, that, that just involve more soft touches. So the reason this comes up is because uh, it's hunting season uh, and I heard about just a really clever solution that a property owner had. He, his neighbor kept coming onto his property uh, in, a, in a wooded area and hunting and it, it was driving the, the uh, property owner a little bit crazy that, that the neighbor would do this. So think for a moment, how do, you, how do you handle this? How do you keep this person from coming onto your property? Uh, I imagine that the signs were posted, the no trespassing, no hunting, that type of thing, and that didn't work. Uh, but then where do you go from there? You have some solutions that hop to mind. Maybe you want to pause and think for a moment, how would you handle this? Uh, fencing could be built, but of course that's expensive, time consuming, and that's something that can just be climbed right over, right? Uh, you could be out there in the morning and catch the person, but now you have to get up, you have to be out there, it's probably cold, you have to wait, maybe they show up, maybe they don't. Uh, there are just all sorts of labor intense, time intense, money intense ways to try to solve this problem that may or may not work. Here's the solution that the property owner came up with. So very clever. Uh, hunting season started at 6.24 a.m. Uh, so what the uh, property owner did was went out and got three wind-up alarm clocks, set them throughout the, the property, one to go off at 6.30 and one to alarm at 6.45, one to alarm at 7 o'clock. Said he never had a problem with the neighbor coming back. Again, of course, the alarms go off and, and just spoils the entire hunting scenario with the different animals that are out there cheap, easy, not time consuming, uh, solves the problem. That's creative thinking outside the box. Let's move into a couple examples here that are more in the private investigator world. Specifically, I'm gonna talk about investigative reporting and investigative reporters use a lot of the same techniques and uh, information gathering systems that private investigators do. And I just wanna give you an example. Bloomberg Business Week did an article on uh, Amazon.com and how they're expanding, where they're moving, where they might be building or, you know, different behind the scenes elements of what the company might be up to. And of course, Amazon is not going to be very forthcoming necessarily with this reporter about their strategic plans, what they're doing. They don't, they don't need to have that out there ahead of time before they want people to know and even for maybe to drive up property prices before they buy things like this. So they, they're just not that cooperative in, uh, for some of this strategic thinking that they're doing. How does a reporter find information that's gonna help them with this? Well, you could cultivate an inside source, which may take time. Uh, you may end up dealing with a disgruntled employee. Now you have credibility issues. Uh, you don't wanna be dealing with stolen documents or insider information. So there's a lot of problems to, that you can encounter 
Think outside the box. What did the reporter do? The reporter ended up going and looking at the help wanted section that Amazon, where are they hiring people and what positions are they hiring for? And found out all throughout the world, different places Amazon was bringing people on and what they were hiring people to do. And so by looking at the jobs that they needed to hire and where those were at, the reporter was able to gather a pretty good strategic picture of what Amazon was thinking about doing as far as upgrading this database system, doing just-in-time type fulfillment things here or there, and where geographically they were interested in doing that. Very clever solution, thinking outside the box. Let's talk directly about private investigations now. Uh, and so if you have to investigate a, an auto accident, and for whatever reason, small town, maybe someone's being uncooperative with you, you're having trouble pulling that accident report, which is public record. You should have no trouble accessing any accident report at any time. Maybe it's just incomplete. Maybe there's something missing. Maybe one page didn't get scanned into the database. Who knows what the problem might be, but the accident report is failing you. Let's think creatively outside the box here. Where else can you get more information about that accident? Especially before you start to talk to the principals involved. Maybe you don't want to tip your hand just yet, to the drivers that were involved because you don't want them to have a chance to get their story together, talk to passengers, things like that. A creative way to do to get more information, go to the uh, emergency squad run for that. There's going to be paperwork about that. When the squad was dispatched, uh, when it arrived, who were the medics, uh, all sorts of transport information, where they brought the person to, and that information can be, you can use that to interview the squad, uh, the ambulance drivers, the people who, who gave medical attention, or find out other information. Just a clever solution to how to handle missing or incomplete information for something like that. If you have a workaround or a clever uh, thing that you know about that has been used and, and worked in the past, uh, or even just an idea maybe you have that might work, uh, the theoretical stuff is, a, you know, I don't deal with that so much, but I'd be curious. Let's take a look. Let's see what you have to say. Drop it in the comments. Share with us. and. We can all learn from each other. This is Larry K. with ShadowAnyone.com. Remember, do the right thing, even if it's the hard thing.